Excuse me, little dog. <clears throat> Hi, guys. Well, it has turned into a pleasant winter day. Now that the heat wave has broken in upstate New York, feeling a little bit more like normal. We're going to be talking a lot about normal here. It is now Thursday, January 5th. <coughs> 2023 and uh, I'm sure all of you know what that is. It is National Bird Day here in the good old United States of America. So before we get into our Doomer Porn Roundup for the day, what is the going on with birds on National Bird Day? All right, to, uh, I'm just going to have to cut to the chase here. National Bird Day, these are some of the species most at risk of extinction in the U.S. As the U.S. marks National Bird Day on January 5th, the majority of bird species in the U.S. face a grim future in coming decades if environmental efforts are not implemented on a larger scale. More than half of all bird species in the U.S. are in decline with plummeting populations across nearly all habitats. Yep, yep. All, about 70 species of birds have lost at least half of their populations in the past 50 years and are poised to lose the other half in the next half century. Yep, yep, yep. I love this. Uh, <laughs> the Director of Conservation Science at the New York City Audubon Society is named Dustin Partridge. <laughs> There you go. I could not think of a better. Uh, so Dustin Parches, Dustin Partridge has this to say on National Bird Day, quote, It's a tough time to be a bird right now. Well, it's a tough time to be a bird or a mammal or, uh, of course, a human. So I'm over here on medium.com. Uh, just trying to decide uh, in my tsunami, my deluge of doom waiting for me. We're just going to do a mashup. I, I, I'm just going to go down. Of course, I have to check in with Umer Hack. Uh, this is the age humanity faces its greatest test itself. There you go. Uh, we are facing the single greatest trauma and tragedy the human race has ever experienced. It is beginning now and it will not stop until it is done. When it's over, history will never forget it. Time will be divided into B.E and AE before the event and after the event. So anyway, he goes, breaks this down, but we're going to move down into the story. Uh, so what is the third chapter of humanity right now? We're in it now. We killed the planet. Yes, we killed the planet. I don't mean that in the naive absolute sense. I mean it in the scientific one. Deep history has seen only five mass extinctions. We have caused the sixth. <clears throat> Climate change is a thing that last happened millions of years ago, at least on this scale. It's happening again, and it, well, it, he says it's the cause, it is one 
of the causes of mass extinction. Humans are the cause of mass extinction. Humans, so whatever climate change has to do with mass extinction, humans are the cause of mass extinction. <clears throat> no, we haven't killed off all life, but here we are. Extinction. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yes, human beings will survive, but more humans are going to die in the next few decades than have ever died before in all the wars and calamities put together. Our civilization will almost certainly crumble as a result. We depend on the planet for, well, everything. Food, water, air, medicine, places to live. We are already starting to run out of them. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, major portions of the planet are not going to be livable and as all that unfolds, pandemics will accelerate and our civilization's systems will surely fail. We will not be able to provide water, air, food, shelter, safety, extinction. We are part of it. It's not going to kill all of us, but it is going to be the single greatest trauma and tragedy humanity has ever faced. In all 300,000 years of its existence, nothing else is even remotely in the same category as causing one of half a dozen mass extinctions on a planet since deep time began. Nothing is even remotely in that final category of death, suffering, ruin, and chaos. Thank you, Umer. All right. Ah, from Umer to this other guy who I really like, I've mentioned him before, called Indaka. So Indaka is telling us life is never getting back to normal. Uh, let's see, let's figure out where I am. Uh, where should I pick up? Uh, the paradox of normalcy is that it is that it somehow means extraordinary. Uh, the idea of normal is that it is normal to exceed and you're somehow failing by not doing it. So, buy something! Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, we are not in a situation where we can have a house and education and money in our pockets and sit around sipping a Coke, feeling up there with presidents and celebrities. Now we need a million dollars just to have a house, a million dollars to raise our kids, and yeah, a Coke costs a few dollars. Great! Consolation prize? Diabetes. All that's left is the appearance of normalcy, the accessories for a lifestyle that's just not normal anymore. At the time I grew up in the suburbs, all of those massive houses were not normal, but they seemed possible. I had no idea how, but it seemed to happen for those people, so it could happen for me. Now, increasingly, young people know that it's just not happening. 
the gap between a normal life feeling safe and possibility has just grown too cavernous. I used to carry around this idea that there was a normal world and I just wasn't adapted to it. But that idea is increasingly threadbare. The world itself is falling apart. One last orgy of greed and speculation before the empire falls. Anybody well adjusted to this is an asshole. Feeling sane at this time is crazy. So, from uh, life is never going to be normal again, we're going to head to Richard Lowenthal. The new normal is a crock. Meet the new abnormal. Yes. <clears throat> Over the past decade, pundits and reporters have been casually tossing around the phrase, the new normal. I've almost started to hate that phrase because it glibly glosses over the drastic ongoing changes and transformations facing our society. Even worse, it signals abject capitulation to fast worsening conditions masked by deranged, fatalistic bravado. What? Me worry? And what the hell is the new normal actually supposed to signify anyway? Yes, today it is increasingly apparent, increasingly apparent that these former usual versus occasional conditions are reversing and trading places. Stability and dependability are fast becoming the exception while frequent intensifying crises are gradually becoming our day-to-day -day utterly abnormal norm. This huge shift in our human experience and our communal lives together is deeply devastating and destabilizing. <clears throat> and our society has not yet begun to grasp or grapple with its full implications. What does it really mean for human society when social, ecological, climatic, emotional, and economic stability are all constantly eroding and collapsing. We're talking about every aspect of life here. <clears throat> More mass murders and shootings, worsening climate crop and supply chain disruptions, insane levels of economic inequality, more and worse weather disasters, out-of-control capitalism, ongoing pandemics, multi-billionaires running amok, fascism and hate on the rise, surging right-wing terrorism, sky-high inflation and indebtedness, Russian warmongering, rising rates of poverty, depression, drug addiction, and suicide, liars, cheaters, and charlatans sprouting up everywhere, rampant escapism and denialism. The list goes on and on, and I like the way uh, he rapped. Uh, he, uh, how does he wrap this up? Um, at this point, it is clear we are all going to be thrown back on ourselves and our own inner and outer resources, I bet. Okay. 
from the new abnormal to the end of the world. It is the end of the world, and I don't feel fine. I am angry. This is Thomas Ott. Take it away, Thomas. Happy New Year! Our civilization and most life on this planet are going extinct. It is the end of the world as we know it, and I don't feel fine. I am quite angry. Hmm. We are living in the sixth extinction event of the planet, and we are the cause. Not a comet, not volcanoes, it is all on us. I am part of the problem too. I get it. I'm sitting here in my cozy house while well, I'm sitting here in Sandy's cozy house with all the wonderful amenities of modern life. I have my laptop that was made with mined rare earth minerals. I expect fresh foods delivered to my grocery store from thousands of miles away. Hmm. But if everyone has an American middle class way of life in the world, the resources we have on Earth can only sustain two billion people. We got four times that amount of people and we are still growing. We did not just exceed the, the carrying capacity of this planet by a little bit. We blew right past it by orders of magnitude. You and I are part of an eight billion people problem. What are we going to do about it? Kill six billion people? Yes. So get to your point. At the bottom, he wraps it up. End of the world. Guess what? We're seeing the beginning of the end. We will all be dead by the time the masses of human the, the masses of humans panic and realize there is no food, no clean water, and they will and they are all burning to death in a 50 C climate. Well, I have a message for you, Jack. You lost and don't even know it yet. The end game started decades ago and the number of chances to fix our mistakes is dwindling fast. Call me a doomer or call me a liberal commie. I don't care. I'm making my voice loud and clear and I don't care who I offend. From the end of the world to the end of the old world order. This is by a fellow or some doomer chick going by the name of B. Oh, making predictions for 2023, the end of the old world order. After contemplating the unique yet predictable nature of our civilization, Let's see what we can expect in 2023. While it is relatively easy to predict the long demise of human civilization based on the fact that it is wholly unsustainable, no matter how we look at it, it is much harder to give precise predictions for the near future. This is especially true in times of great flux when the decline of empire coincides with looming resource shortages making things especially complicated. So uh, this is his, uh, let's just read. You can find all of this on medium.com. So we're just going to read this first couple, I guess, of his predictions. We have spent the preceding years and decades in massive denial, touting how clean technologies 
will save us from climate change, never realizing that they are as much part of the problem as the old polluting technologies they aimed to replace were and still are. Degrowth, regenerative farming, or giving up technological process progress willingly to devise a way back to a somewhat more sustainable path as a result will remain unthinkable in mainstream politics, even though it will be imposed on the people by sheer necessity. Many will keep sincerely believing because they want to believe that renewables and a circular economy is a way out of this mess, never realizing that these measures are nothing more than futile attempts made at electrifying the Titanic. More and more wind turbines and solar panels will be built as a result, but the grid will keep becoming ever more fragile and prone to blackouts due to their inherent intermittency by the end of this year, renewables will have passed their point of diminishing returns in many places. But we're going to wind up, assuming uh, my camera is still running, with D.K. Blair, the saddest story I have ever heard. <clears throat> There are many metrics one could use to demonstrate civilizational collapse, unprecedented levels of inequality, the ratcheting up of tensions between global superpowers, runaway inflation, the growing potential of nuclear war, increasing poverty and starvation worldwide, and the sheer inability to effectively tackle climate change. Any one of these would portend disastrous results for our species going forward, but to have a nexus of all of them, all happening concurrently, practically guarantees that if something drastic does not change soon, we are surely doomed to face an apocalypse of biblical proportions. <clears throat> of all these crises currently swirling around humanity in this deeply troubled period of time, however, I find that none is more overlooked, yet more highly emblematic of our capitalist conundrum and the depraved destruction of our system than the phenomenon we have come to call the sixth mass extinction. <clears throat> Animal species of every stripe, breed, and color, aside from those we domesticated, are beginning to disappear from the face of the planet, some never to return again. Since the advent of neoliberal capitalism and the ideology of continuous growth, greed is good and more is always better, the wildlife on earth has simply not stood a chance and are being eviscerated in astonishing numbers, which brings us back full circle to National Bird Day. So that is your Doomer Porn uh, Tsunami for National Bird Day, the fifth day of 2023. Uh, we're five days into this, guys. Anyway, get out there and uh, enjoy 
your new abnormal while you still can. And uh, with that, uh, the little dog and I are going to go take a walk on this beautiful winter day while we still can. Bye, guys.